Thank you so much for tuning in to the Defending Christianity podcast. I'm your host, Levi Dade, and in this podcast, we aim to talk about the evidence and reasons for why the Christian faith is true and why it is good. We do this with the hope to encourage the church to engage the culture around us and to be ready to give an answer for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus as 1 Peter 3.15 commands. Thank you so much for listening. God bless. Uh, we've had Dr. Turk on the show before. Uh, thank you for being with us. How are you, Dr. Turk? Hey, great being with you, Levi. Thanks for having me on so, again. Yeah, no problem. So uh, could you just talk a little bit about the premise of the book, exactly what you're trying to do with it? Yeah, um, I, we are trying to show that just about every blockbuster movie over the past, say, 50 years, that is a superhero movie or a fantasy movie, probably uh, let's say the past 35 years um, in some way borrows from the greatest story ever told. And that is the story of Jesus, because these superhero and fantasy movies all want to take us from this life of pain and suffering to a life where there is no pain and suffering, a life of bliss. And normally someone has to sacrifice. Someone has to rescue us from this pain and suffering in these movies, in these films and that's actually what Jesus does for us. Uh, it's countercultural because the culture says, follow your heart. But the movies that inspire us, the heroes don't follow their hearts. They follow the truth. They follow the loving thing to do, which usually involves some kind of sacrifice. So we go through the big movie franchises, Captain America, Iron Man, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Batman, Wonder Woman, Star Wars. And we, we've got some of Superman and Spider-Man in there. And we show how the storylines often line up with Christianity. There are biblical life lessons in there, and the heroes all point to the ultimate hero, Jesus of Nazareth. Some Christians might push back and and say that you shouldn't do this to show anything about Christianity, that you should let the Bible speak about it, um, things like that. So how does this relate to possibly Paul on Mars Hill in, in Acts 17, what you and Zach are doing with the book? Yeah, what Paul did in 51 AD, 18 years after Jesus rose from the dead, he goes to Athens and he sees the city's full of idols and he's he's all upset about it, but he wants to reach these people for Jesus. When he gets there, he does not quote from the Old Testament like he would if he went into a synagogue. He did, when in the synagogue, you know, he'd go in and, and reason from the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. He doesn't mention the scriptures in Mars and Mars Hill when he's in Athens. You know what he does? He quotes from their own philosophers and their own stories in order to bridge between what they believe now and the gospel. That's what he does. He creates a bridge by using their own philosophers and their own stories. In other words, Paul knew the movies of his day to try and win people to Jesus. He talks about the altar to the unknown God that they had set up there. And he says, I want to tell you about this God, the God you don't know. And so he relates, he even uses, as I say, quotes from their own philosophers and applies the, he, he applies what the philosophers say to Jesus. The Greek philosophers would say things like, in Zeus, we live and have it, we live and move and have our being. And Paul comes along and says, no, in Yahweh, we live and move and have our being. So he's using what they already know to teach them the truth about the gospel. In fact, Jesus uses fictional stories to teach people the truth uh, about Christianity. The parables that we read, they're not real truths in in the sense that they're they're stories that actually happened. If you were in the first century and said to Jesus, wow, I love that story about the Good Samaritan. What's this Good Samaritan's name? Who is this guy? When did this happen? He'd go, what are you talking about? He, he said he would say this is a story to communicate a truth about morality or theology it's 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 i'm, I'm not telling you stories that really happened i'm making these things up so you can get the truth i want to communicate and so all we're doing is we're doing exactly what jesus and the new testament writers and paul did to try and bridge the gap between where people are in the gospel. We're using fictional stories to say, look how this parallels the truth. Yeah, I think it's really interesting when we have to kind of contextualize the gospel 
uh, the truth of Christianity. And I think it's interesting also that it, it gives a good framework for how we should engage the world and the culture mm-hmm. around us that we, we shouldn't just only use our Bibles. It's good to use it when we can, but if they don't believe in the Bible, then you're not going to get very far with them. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so the, so the implication there is that you ought to know as a Christian, what the works of your culture and your time are. Mm-hmm. And so it, it speaks in, into the idea that Christians should be prepared and ready and studied up <laughs> to give an answer uh, exactly. for the hope that they have. So I think that's a, a interesting way of looking at it. Mm-hmm.